I've just bought a stereo radiogram, actually, to <laughs> try to bring my kids up to appreciate better than I do. The name of this city is engraved deep on the hearts of thousands of football fans who've cheered or cursed Leeds United on its road to success. But the name of Leeds is also to be found in the publicity handouts of dozens of pianists all over the world who are proud to record their success in the Leeds International Piano Competition. This is the fourth event of its kind since it was launched in 1963 and it's established as one of the three or four most important competitions in the world. There were originally something under 200 applicants and this number was halved on the basis of the paper qualifications. In the event, 60 candidates arrived. There were slightly more men than women and they came from 29 countries. America with nine players and Britain with eight heading the list. One surprising omission was the Soviet Union who for the first time has not sent an officially sponsored team. Now, be quite clear that this competition is not for beginners. It's very unlikely that a raw student is going to win because the demands made on these players are enormous. They have to play three recitals, two concertos, in front of a jury of terrifying musical distinction. Be sure that the winner of this competition can stand comparison with any pianist on the concert platform today. Well, what do they come for? The first prize is the Princess Mary Gold Medal and a cash award of 750 pounds and there are seven other cash prizes. But to my mind, the most attractive reward is the prestige of winning at Leeds and the chance to share in a really astonishing list of engagements that can launch these players onto an international career. I feel that perhaps so much help from industry and private individuals ought not to be necessary. Uh, local authorities, I feel, are dragging their feet as far as the arts are concerned, and uh, it becomes necessary if you are going to put on something in as big a scale as Lady Harwood and Fanny Waterman envisaged in the Leeds Pianoforte competition, some help other than local authorities and government is essential. These are the engagements to be shared by this year's winners. To find out what it means to win at Leeds, I spoke to the pianist from Romania who three years ago was an almost unknown young visitor to this country, Radu Lupu. How important do you think the Leeds competition was for you in your career? I think that it was the most, most important thing what's happened to me because only after that I started to have my career and I'm grateful to that. You think this is because the prize involves engagements? Yes, this is very important. This is especially that uh, this competition is in England and England and especially London is, I, I consider, the musical centre of the world. I'm not involved directly with the competition, but I'm one of many people in this city who has offered house and hospitality and use of the piano to the competitors who have come here for the festival. a small thing to do when you consider the amount of effort that's put into this by the executive committee who run the festival. This represents a very small intrusion in my privacy. It's a little effort 
And after all, the city must be famous for something other than its football team. here in Leeds, but the competition office arranges for all of the competitors to be able to practice any time that they want. And I've practiced just every day here, and I just call up the office in the morning, and they'll give me a piano for as many hours as I want. The jury's first decision was to eliminate 40 of the original 60 players. Of the remaining 20, which included, I'm afraid, only one British girl, Penelope Blackie, Eight were to be chosen for the semi-final, and their names were announced last Monday by Lord Boyle, chairman of the jury. Um, the eight contestants who will now go forward from stage two to the semi-final um, are these. Mr. Eugene Inditch from the United States, Miss Carmen Orr, Israel. Um, thirdly, Mr. Murray Peraya, uh, United States. Fourthly, Mr. Craig Shepherd, um, United States. Mr. James Tokko, United States. Miss Mitsuko Ushida, Japan. And Mr. Daniel Adney, Israel. And Miss Linda Bustani, Brazil. I think this is very interesting that um, four of the eight should in fact have chosen one or other of the Schumann options. Uh, we did of course hear some quite outstandingly fine playing um, of, 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 of those two works. Can it be that we uh, understand Schumann just at this time in history rather better than we did uh, 30 or 40 years ago. I have a feeling that um, ever since Richter's recordings first became known in this country, that sort of time, I think we have come to understand Schumann more. In the semi-finals, the players have, for the first time, a completely free choice of music. Are you going far from the composers that you've already played? Well, uh, I'm just, uh, he, well, actually, I'm just changing one. I'm doing the symphonic etudes of Schumann, and I played a Debussy etude, and I'm continuing to play two preludes of Debussy and then a small Chopin group. Yes. Again, studying in Romania, piano with a wonderful teacher, Olga Roszka is in his name. And uh, then I, uh, I came to Geneva for two years and I studied with Nikita Magalov. And then to Israel and I study now with uh, Mandro Katz. <laughs>
to assess what the performer's role is. If the performer's role is to play the music of the past with the meaning of the present, which is, I think, a perfectly valid uh, role, then uh, a competition, if, uh, if it is to be held, is perfectly valid with, with older music. to know each competitor, to have had an opportunity to talk with them. Because their talent is one thing very important that I hope we detect more or less fairly. I hope we make not too many mistakes. But I would also like who they are, to know them, to hear them. Things impossible that I say one cannot do. But if one did not dream, one could not live. I'd like to take the competitive element out of a competitive festival. I must say I'm very impressed by the camaraderie of all the competitors. I don't feel this hot um, jealousy that can occur at competitions, and I would like to get many more engagements and perhaps help the top ten. What do you feel? Um... I don't know. I, I feel terribly sorry for the ones who don't get through, but then there's nothing you can do about that, however much you might wish. Um, Any other way you feel you, there's something you want to improve or change? I think as, as competitions go, I think we've got it in as good a shape now as really as, as, as one can. I don't think the audiences have been very good this time. I've been very disappointed. Because one person did remark to us that he was interested, but didn't actually know it was happening. Local, a well, local person. Well, it was in the papers. Yes. I mean, what more can you do? Yes. And it was advertised, advertised. in the, in the yes. barkers yes. where you buy the tickets. If you can accept that competitions are very good for the young professional artist, it's, it's practically the only way for them to make a breakthrough, yes. then I think we've got as near to that as we can. I think on, on the positive side yes. of, of a competition, I think the um, what is exciting and good about is that one discovers uh, possibly a great mm -hmm. new talent and, and one is in a position to help, really in a practical way to further it through all these engagements. With five semi-finalists to accommodate on the first evening, it was 10 o'clock at night before we came to the second session and Craig Shepherd was the first to play.
Now, my reasons for coming to the Leeds competition are simply because if one is fortunate enough to win the Leeds competition, it gives 50 major appearances all over England and some on the continent. And uh, this is what really every young artist is looking for, much more so than the money which is involved in the competition, because I really, I think there's 750 pounds as a first prize. But next to the, uh, not that I'm uh, knocking down 750 pounds, but next to the amount of concerts which one would get from this as a result of winning it, uh, there's no comparison. There is not really a master organizational plan in the United States. And uh, in this sense, there's a great deal of variety, I think, in the basic approaches to study and to pedagogy. Uh, this, of course, allows an individual student or a talent to develop according to his own individual needs, which I feel is a good thing. member of the jury to have taken part in all four competitions is Nikita Magalov. If somebody plays really beautifully something, I don't mind if it's not my way of thinking at all. There was such a case, without mentioning anyone, mm -hmm. I can't say this time, a performance that completely convinced me, though it wasn't at all according to my idea exactly how I would interpret that piece. I think as long as somebody plays something very intelligently or, or with the feeling, with the right feeling, it doesn't matter so much. Now, you said Prokofiev Sonata. Prokofiev Sonata is another case. I've heard him himself play it very often. It is a work which is dedicated to my uncle, as I told you the <laughs> other day. Say, I was about to say, Raymond Leppard said the other day, I, just, I hate that Sonata. And I said, well, it's dedicated to my uncle. <laughs> he made an extraordinary <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. However, I've heard this work from him himself and it didn't didn't matter and they're out to impress no. and, they, uh, and it's a big risk you know if you play Schubert to Miss Hebler well then yes. you know you already no, it's, have not, <laughs> it's not that the reason certainly no, no, they I have studied this joking. or that work and that they play I think but still and been... as they are young they don't have such an intended repertoire yet I was amazed though that the Wandra fantasy never shows yes. up. Yes, I yeah, noticed absolutely. that uh, all the works named in the first stage were played by the 60, of course. Yes. And in the second stage there were only 20, as yes. you say. Yes. Mm. Yes. It might have been that. There have been two. Yes. But it, I, I think you're quite right, Bernard, that, that, that uh, for the, so many, I think 12 yes. it was, who chose the Prokofiev. Which is is a uh, yes. uh, partier to Nikita's uncle, but it is a <laughs> it is a somewhat empty work. I mean, it's in a, in a sense it's a, it is a real virtuoso piece. Yes. Mm. Uh, that's my impression. Obviously, not his uncle's. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm amazed that so many chose it because it's a devil to play too, isn't it? Technically, well, it, very hard. Well, it used to be, but now mm. it seems that they seem. Well, they to didn't be get it all right, did they? You just get it. To, yes. Do you feel that if somebody plays the text? note perfect, text perfect, that he must go through to no, the next no, round? No, no, absolutely not. 
I, no, Probably I also not. don't feel that way. But unfortunately, unf uh, there were very few texts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Bad. laughs> and now we come to the third session of the semi-final. And we begin with Mitsuko Uchida. <laughs> I think Japanese people have a sort of talent for string instruments from the physical reason as well, that they are very, very clever on fingers and small and, you know, I don't know how to express yeah, it, but, I understand you know, very, well. uh, very small, clever very in small uh, movements yes. or, you know, and, but actually there are even more piano students than people who study string instruments. For the winner of Lita, I think, is, he, it's a springboard to a career. I mean, if he's ready to, to use the opportunity, to grasp it, then he's ma made it. Je crois que le jeune a tout pour se donner à la musique romantique. Il se donne, il doit se donner, il a besoin de se donner à la musique romantique. Je crois que c'est pour ça. Un prélude de Fib de Shostakovich, la fantaisie de Schumann et la toccate de Schumann. Surtout Schumann.
Well, it's now Saturday night and the audience is arriving for the final stage here in Leeds Town Hall, when three of the eight players that you've just seen will be performing a full-scale concerto. Now, each member of the audience will have formulated their own response to the playing that they've heard, and I hope that you too have been able to get some impression of the eight semi-finalists from the excerpts that we've shown. The jury, of course, bases its decision on the playing throughout, and I think I share some people's surprise at their choice of some of the finalists in view of the performances that we have heard. I shall not easy, easily forget, for example, Carmen Orr from Israel for her wonderful, impassioned, poetic playing of Schumann and Albanith, nor the creative imagination of Mitsugo Ushida in Schoenberg's Opus 11, nor indeed the remarkable control of tone and colour by Daniel Adney in his playing of Ravel's Miroir. In point of fact, the three finalists are Eugene Injik, Murray Pariah and Craig Shepard, and they all come from the United States. This is the first time we have three finalists from one country and evidently it's going to be the first time that we have a first prize winner from outside Europe. You may remember that the first competition was won by Michael Roll from Great Britain, the second by Rafael Rothko from Spain and the third by Radu Lupu from Romania. Well, the three finalists have been offered a choice of eight concertos and it so happens that two of them have chosen the same concerto, Rachmaninoff's third in D minor, and the other one is Chopin's E minor concerto. The orchestra is the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, conducted by Charles Groves. And in a moment, onto the platform will come Eugene Injik and we'll hear him play the first movement of Rachmaninoff's concerto number three in D minor.
that point, we leave Eugene Injik's performance of Rachmaninoff's third concerto. What you heard was absolutely consistent with his playing earlier. Always forceful, but always under tight control. Now with Murray Pariah, the technical skill was less extrovert, but nonetheless astonishing. Every note he plays, even in the fastest passage work, has a round, clear tone. And his poetic elegance had already captivated the audience before they heard his playing of Chopin's first concerto. We join him now at the beginning of the slow movement.
Murray Pariah in the slow movement of Chopin's first concerto in E minor. The last finalist is Craig Shepherd, and he's the authentic virtuoso pianist, a young lion at the keyboard, bursting with energy and enthusiasm and equipped with a technique to match. He'd had the audience cheering with the dazzling performance of the Liszt Sonata and the fireworks of Petrushka. Now you hear him in the last movement of Rachmaninoff's third concerto. <laughs>
Craig Shepherd to the end, carrying the audience with him by the sheer panache of his performance, and splendidly partnered by Charles Groves, who this year, for the first time, had sat through the whole competition as a member of the jury, as well as conducting. Well, now, with the playing over, the jury retired for their last discussion, leaving the rest of us to argue our own choice of winner while we waited for the announcement and the presentation of the prizes by the Duchess of Kent. But, of course, the most tense people in the hall last night were those three finalists, faced with anything up to an hour or more's wait, so I took the opportunity of talking to them. Did you feel it a particular strain having to play with the jury so very close? Because this is something, when you're a concert, you're never aware of the critics, for example, sitting there in the front row, are you? Well, it didn't bother me. I didn't pay attention to them, so it didn't bother me. How did you feel? It bothered me because they had a different edition of the work, <laughs> and, and they kept turning pages where I was still on the last one, so... <laughs> <laughs> this is true, it's rather humorous when I look back on it, but it wasn't at the time that I knew in my Haydn sonata, for example, the other day, exactly when he was going to turn his page, I almost said, now you can turn when I was playing, you know, I almost turned to him. <laughs> and they turned so loudly, that's the problem, they, as if they did it expressly. <laughs> Do you think that um, you actually approach your performances differently when you know you're playing to an, uh, a jury of experts from, say, if you made your debut at Carnegie Hall or, or, or Philharmonic Hall in New York? No, absolutely not. Absolutely the same. The same. Absolutely. Well, they had another half hour to wait before the bells signalled the return of the jury and the long-awaited result. We feel that the, by a substantial majority that the first prize at this international competition should be awarded to Murray Perraia. substantial majority, we say the second prize should be awarded to Craig Shepherd. Thank you. 